Welcome back to Celebrities Who Died Today. Today, we gather to commemorate the extraordinary lives of several remarkable individuals who have recently departed from this world. From trailblazing fashion icons to legendary figures in the world of music and entertainment, their contributions have left an indelible mark on our collective consciousness. But before we delve into their captivating stories, take a moment to honor their memory by hitting that thumbs up button. At Celebrities Who Died Today, we believe in celebrating the legacies of those who have enriched our lives. So join us as we pay tribute to these unforgettable souls. Number one, Jacqueline Jose. Jacqueline Jose was one of the most celebrated and respected actresses in Philippine cinema and television. Jacqueline Jose was born on October 21, 1963, in Angeles City, Pampanga, as Mary Jane Santa Ana Guck. She started her acting career in 1984, starring in adult drama films such as Chicas and Private Show, which earned her a FAMAS Award nomination. She then worked with acclaimed directors like Lino Broca and Chito S. Rono and won her first Gawad Urian Award for Best Actress in 1986 for Takal Tukso. Jacqueline Jose continued to impress audiences and critics with her versatile and powerful performances in various genres, from drama to comedy to action. She received numerous awards and recognition from different award-giving bodies, such as the Luna Awards, the FAMAS Awards, and the Society of Philippine Entertainment Editors. She also made her mark on television, appearing in popular series and teleseries such as Familia Zaragoza, Mula Sapuso, Reputacion, Kehik Puso Y Masugatan, and Bolera. One of Jacqueline Jose's most iconic roles came in 2016, when she portrayed Ma Rosa, a mother who runs a small convenience store and sells illegal drugs on the side, in Brillante Mendoza's film of the same name. Her realistic and nuanced portrayal of a woman caught in the harsh realities of life in the slums earned her the prestigious Cannes Film Festival Award for Best Actress, making her the first Filipino and Southeast Asian to win the award. She was also honored by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts at the Annie N.G. Dangle Ceremony in 2017. Jacqueline Jose was not only a talented actress, but also a loving mother to her two children, Andy and Gwen, whom she had from different relationships. She was married to actor Mark Gill, who passed away in 2014. Jacqueline Jose passed away on March 2, 2024, at the age of 60, leaving behind a legacy of excellence and inspiration for Philippine cinema and television. She will be greatly missed by her fans, colleagues, and family. Number 2. U.L. Washington U.L. Washington, the iconic shortstop who played for the Kansas City Royals, Montreal Expos, and Pittsburgh Pirates. U. L. Washington was born on October 27, 1953, in Stringtown, Oklahoma, as one of 11 children born to Aura Lee and George Washington Jr. The U and L were his legal given name and were not initials of other names. He grew up in a modest background but developed a passion for baseball from a young age. He attended Stringtown High School and Murray State College, where he played college baseball for one year. He then joined the Kansas City Royals Baseball Academy, a unique program that trained young players for professional careers. He was one of only three MLB players, along with Ron Washington and Frank White, to have been products of the Royals Academy. He made his MLB debut in 1977 and played for the Royals until 1984. He was known for his defensive skills, his switch hitting ability, and his trademark toothpick that he always had in the corner of his mouth while on the field and at the plate. He had his best offensive season in 1982 when he batted .286 with 10 home runs and 60 RBIs. He was also part of the Royals team that won the American League pennant in 1980 and reached the World Series, where they lost to the Philadelphia Phillies. He was on first base and scored on George Brett's famous Pine Tar home run in 1983. After leaving the Royals, he played for the Montreal Expos in 1985 and the Pittsburgh Pirates from 1986 to 1987. He retired from baseball in 1987, having played in 1,039 games and having a career batting average of .251 with 27 home runs 
and 255 RBIs. He later worked as a coach for various minor league teams and as a scout for the Royals. He also ran a baseball camp for kids in his hometown of Stringtown. Sadly, U.L. Washington passed away on March 3, 2024, at the age of 70, after a battle with cancer. He is survived by his wife, two sons, and four grandchildren. He is remembered as a beloved and respected figure in the baseball community and as a role model for many aspiring players. Number 3. Claudio Tignoli Claudio Tignoli was born in 1963 and started his reporting career at Vija magazine, one of the most influential publications in Brazil. He then worked for several newspapers and magazines, such as Folha DS. Paulo, Jornal da Tarde, Caros Amigos, Rolling Stone Brazil, and Galileu. He also worked for radio stations CBN, Jovem Pan, and El Dorado, and was a co-founder of the news site Brazil 247. He was known for his investigative journalism and his critical views on politics, society, and culture. Tignoli was also a professor of journalism at the University of Sao Paulo, where he taught and mentored many students and researchers. He was a board member of the Brazilian Association for Investigative Journalism and a member of the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, participating in projects such as the Panama Papers. Tugnoli was also a musician and a writer. He played guitar and harmonica in several bands and wrote 12 books, including biographies of Brazilian rock singer Labau and former intelligence chief Romeu Tuma J.R. His latest book, Assassinato de Repetacos, was a bestseller that exposed corruption and scandals in the Brazilian government. Unfortunately, Claudio Tignoli passed away on March 3, 2024, at the age of 60. Tignoli had a heart transplant in 2023, but suffered complications that led to his death in 2024. He left behind a legacy of courage, creativity, and professionalism in journalism and literature. He was admired and respected by his colleagues, friends, and readers, and will be missed by many. Number 4. Eleanor Collins Eleanor Collins, Canada's first lady of jazz. Eleanor Collins was a singer, actor, and television host who broke many barriers for black entertainers in Canada. She was born on November 21, 1919, in Edmonton, Alberta to parents who were part of the black migration from Oklahoma to the Canadian prairies. She grew up singing gospel music in her church and family and won a talent contest at the age of 15. She moved to Vancouver in 1938 and became involved in the local jazz scene. She performed on CBC radio with various groups, including the Swing Low Quartet, a gospel group that featured her sister Ruby Sneed. She also sang for the troops overseas during World War II. In 1942, she married Richard Collins and had four children. She retired from music for a few years to raise her family, but returned to the stage in the early 1950s. She acted in several theater productions, such as Finian's Rainbow and Kiss Me Kate. She also starred in Bambula, a CBC TV show that had the first interracial cast in Canada. In 1955, she made history by becoming the first Canadian woman and the first black entertainer in Canada to have her own national television show, The Eleanor Show. She was often compared to American singer Lena Horne and received offers to move to the US, but she chose to stay in Canada. She continued to perform on various radio and TV shows throughout the 1960s and 70s, such as Eleanor, Blues and the Ballad, and Quintet. She also performed in clubs and concerts with many jazz musicians, such as Chris Gage, Lance Harrison, and Dave Robbins. Eleanor Collins was a trailblazer and a role model for many black and female artists in Canada. She was also a civic leader who supported many causes, such as the United Way, the Red Cross, and the BC Cancer Foundation. She received many awards and honors for her contributions to music and society, such as the Order of Canada, the BC Entertainment Hall of Fame, and a commemorative stamp by Canada Post. She passed away on March 3, 2024, at the age of 104, leaving behind a legacy of excellence, grace, and joy. Eleanor Collins was a remarkable woman who enriched the Canadian culture with her voice and her spirit. 
Number 5. Chris Mortensen Chris Mortensen was one of the most respected and beloved NFL reporters of all time. Chris Mortensen passed away on Sunday, March 3, 2024, at the age of 72, after a long battle with cancer. He left behind his wife Mickey, his son Alex, and countless friends and fans who admired his work and his character. Chris Mortensen was born in Torrance, California, in 1951. He served two years in the Army before he began his journalism career at the South Bay Daily Breeze in 1969. He worked his way up from covering high school sports to becoming one of the most influential and revered reporters in the sports industry. He joined ESPN in 1991, and for the next 33 years, he covered the NFL with extraordinary skill and passion. He broke some of the biggest stories in the league, such as Peyton Manning's retirement, and he provided insights and analysis across ESPN's platforms from Sunday NFL Countdown to SportsCenter. Chris Mortensen was not only a great journalist but also a great human being. He was known for his kindness, generosity, and humility. He mentored many young reporters and supported many causes, such as the Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research. He was a man of faith and family, who loved his wife and son dearly. He was also a fighter, who never gave up on his dream of reporting to the NFL, even when he was diagnosed with stage 4 throat cancer in 2016. He underwent successful treatments and returned to ESPN, where he continued to work until he announced his retirement in 2020. Chris Mortensen was a legend in the NFL and in the journalism world. He received many awards and honors for his work, such as the George Polk Award, the Dick McCann Award, and two Pulitzer Prize nominations. He was also honored by the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2016. He will be remembered as one of the best in the business and as a true friend and colleague to many. He will be missed by all who knew him and by all who loved the game of football. Number 6. Mark Dodson Actor Mark Dodson was a voice actor who worked on some of the most iconic movies of the 1980s and beyond. Mark Dodson was born on February 1, 1960 in St. Louis, Missouri. He started his career in 1983 when he landed his first big role as Salacious Crumb, the cackling pet of Jabba the Hutt in Star Wars Return of the Jedi. He also voiced the Ewoks in Ewoks The Battle for Endor and Nima Scavenger in Star Wars The Force Awakens. But Mark Dodson was not only a Star Wars fan favorite, he also voiced the Mogwai, the cute and mischievous creatures that turn into gremlins, in Gremlins and Gremlins 2 The New Batch. He also voiced several zombies in George Romero's horror classic, Day of the Dead. Mark Dodson had a versatile and unique voice that he used to create memorable characters and sounds. He also had voice roles in commercials and video games, such as Star Trek Online, Ghost Runner, Bendy and the Dark Revival, and Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Mark Dodson loved his fans and enjoyed meeting them at conventions around the world, he was honored to be inducted into dozens of the local chapters of the Star Wars 500 First Legions, a fan organization that celebrates the Star Wars universe. Sadly, Mark Dodson passed away on March 2, 2024, at the age of 64. He died of a heart attack in Evansville, Indiana, where he was attending a horror convention. He is survived by his daughter, Ciara, and his grandchildren. Mark Dodson was a talented and beloved voice actor who left a lasting legacy in the entertainment industry. He will be missed by his family, friends, and fans. Number 7. Ed Oteet Ed Oteet was a hard-nosed catcher who won the World Series with the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1979. Ed Oteet was born on July 11, 1951, in Muncie, Pennsylvania. He was a talented athlete who played football and wrestled in high school. He also played baseball in an American Legion League, where he caught the attention of the Pirates, who drafted him in 1970. Otti started his professional career as a third baseman, then moved to the outfield, before finally becoming a catcher. He made his major league debut in 1974, but he did not get much playing time until 1977 when he became a starter. Ott was known for his toughness and grit. He was not afraid to take or deliver hits, 
and he earned the nickname Otto for his scrappy style. He was a fan favorite and a leader in the clubhouse. He was also a clutch hitter, who batted dot 333 with 3 RBI in the 1979 World Series, which the Pirates won in seven games. Oti played for the Pirates until 1981, when he was traded to the California Angels. Unfortunately, he suffered a rotator cuff injury that sidelined him for the 1982 season. He tried to make a comeback in the minor leagues, but he retired at the age of 32. After his playing career, Oti became a coach and a manager in various teams, including the Houston Astros, the Detroit Tigers, and the Allentown Ambassadors. He also coached in the Independent Canadian American Association of Professional Baseball. O.T. passed away on March 3, 2024, at the age of 72 in Danville, Pennsylvania. He is survived by his wife, Sue, and his three children. He is remembered as a beloved member of the Pirates family and a champion of the game. Number 8. Agbiom Kojo Agbiom Kojo was a Togolese politician who served as Prime Minister of Togo from 2000 to 2002. Agbion Kodjo was born on October 12, 1954, in Topli, a town in the south of Togo. He studied organizational management at the University of Poitiers in France and returned to Togo in 1983. He worked as a commercial director of a state-owned company until 1988 when he was appointed as Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture by President Nasingbi Iadima. He held various ministerial positions until 1993 when he became the Director General of the Autonomous Port of Lome, the main port of the country. He was also elected to the National Assembly in 1999 and became its president in June of that year. In August 2000, President Iadima appointed him as Prime Minister, a position he held until June 2002, when he was dismissed by the president due to political differences. He was also accused of corruption and embezzlement, charges that he denied. After leaving office, he founded his own political party, the Patriotic Movement for Democracy and Development, and ran for president in 2020. He claimed to have won the election, but the official results gave the victory to Ayadima's son, Four Nasingbi, who had been in power since 2005. Kojo rejected the results and called for protests, but he was arrested and charged with treason and public disorder. He was released on bail in April 2020, but he faced constant harassment and intimidation from the authorities. He decided to flee the country and seek asylum in France, where he continued to denounce the regime and advocate for democracy and human rights in Togo. Sadly, he passed away on March 3, 2024, at the age of 69, from a heart attack. He was mourned by his supporters and allies, who remembered him as a courageous and visionary leader who fought for the dignity and freedom of his people. As we bid farewell to these luminous individuals, let us carry the torch of their legacies forward with us. Whether it's Iris Apel's pioneering spirit in the world of fashion or Paul Vachon's unparalleled presence in the wrestling arena, their impact will continue to resonate for generations to come. Let us remember and cherish the lessons they imparted, the trails they blazed and the hearts they touched. Join us in honoring their memories and may their spirits inspire us to live with passion, creativity, and resilience. Until we meet again, this is Celebrities Who Died Today, signing off.